Today, in this video, I'm going to talk about mumps. So mumps is a contagious infection that causes painful swelling of the salivary glands. This salivary glands, also known as parotid gland, on both sides of the jaw, produce saliva. For epidemiology, mumps is worldwide distributed and they are prevalent in crowding and urban community. And since the introduction of MMR vaccine, the incidence has declined and mumps is predominant in childhood or school age children, which are mainly 10 to 15 years old. And they are rare in early infancy, probably due to the result of persisting maternal antibodies. For clinical features, the incubation period of mumps is normally 14 to 21 days. The period of infectivity is 7 days, which is 2 to 3 days before the onset of symptoms and 3 days afterwards. So total 7 days period of infectivity. The symptoms of mumps include fever, headache, earache, malice, myalgia, swelling and pain over the parotid gland, and trismus, which is pain on eating and drinking. Whereas for signs of mumps, there are parotitis, where there is enlargement of the parotid glands. It is initially unilateral and reaches maximum Normally, one to five days later, they will become bilateral parotid swelling. So, in parotitis, the skin over the parotid gland is edematous, red in color, it will be warm and also tender to touch. And this parotitis, it gradually settles over three to seven days. Other signs include submandibular and sublingual infection, but there is, they are less frequently involved. For investigations, the diagnosis is based on clinical symptoms and signs. We can take the urine, saliva or throat swab and also the cerebrospinal fluid if we suspect for a mum's meningitis. We can check the serum antibody titer, which we expect to it to be raised. And however, for definitive diagnosis, we should do viral isolation in cell culture and serology of viral antigen which means the complement fixation test or hemagglutination inhibition test. For management of mums, we mainly manage the symptoms and also give supportive management. So for symptoms, we can relieve the pain with analgesics, for example, giving paracetamol. And others, supportive management, we can um, advise for adequate nutrition, for example, eating soft food or fluids, and also take care of their mouth hygiene. We should also advise the child to rest in bed and there will be no antiviral therapy needed. That's all for my video. Thank you.